Shalom, my people, Shalom. Hey, this is a very important message. All my messages are very important. But this one here, it, it, it's like it, it's, it's neat to be said. The reason why I do what I do. The reason why I like to teach the Word of God. The reason why I love studying this Bible and I love studying other books to bring words to you. Because I know we are a lost people. I know see, it's not meant for everybody, so everybody ain't going to get this message. And I understand that. But the one that do get it, it's meant for them. Everybody not going to get it. They said narrow is the gate. And narrow is the gate. So that means everybody ain't going to get it. Two-thirds of the so-called Negroes won't make it. So I understand. I understand all that. See, in church, they tell you everybody going to make it. But everybody ain't going to make it. I understand every bit of that. So what I'm trying to get to now is that... Um, Excuse me for a minute. Yes. Um, wow. Yes. What I'm trying to get to now is to let everybody understand what's going on. So it's my job to do it. And you say, well, how is your job to do it? Well, if you ever read the book of Ezekiel, right? Anybody ever read the book of Ezekiel? Do they, do they even go through it in church about the book of Ezekiel? Well, let me go through the book of Ezekiel in, in the Bible. And uh, I'm going to tell you why I do what I do, why I love doing what I'm doing. You know, I, I could be doing something. I could be reading other books, you know, and just get my own groove on. But I love this. I love the knowledge. I, it, it woke me up when I understood what was going on. So a lot of times we're in church, we don't really know what's going on. You're just there. So you don't know your purpose, and you don't know what to do. So you just go to church for a few moments to, to, to hear the preacher uh, say whatever he's going to say and walk out, and you forget about what he said. Now, I know y'all seen the article about Joe Osteen, right? Joe Osteen bought a $325,000 uh, $325, car. That's what he bought with the money that y'all giving him. For him to go up there and speak about what his daddy did. Don't, you don't know who you are. You don't know your nationality. You don't know your judgment. You don't know anything. You just let these preachers come in here and they talk to you any kind of way and tell you that. But you starving. You have nowhere to stay. You catching the bus. You giving all your earned money to them. But they live in lavishly. They show this house. It, you can see that camp, uh, uh, compound. That man standing on acres of land house where you got people starving. People filling up that that uh, that that, that, that um, used to be football stadium. Filling it up to the to the to the utmost. Got run over. But then when the hurricane Katrina come, he won't let you come in there. But he got this compound he's standing on. But see, we continue to be fooled because we don't study and we don't read. I'm gonna tell you why I do what I do. Why I teach the way I teach and why I love this way I do. I know people say, well, that ain't the same boy I know. Yes, I know. I'm not the same. You got to grow up sooner or later. You got to start reading on your own. I fell in love with reading. I just can't. Now, I, I, I can't get enough. I got books all around me. I can't get enough of reading. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love information. I love reading about us, what we done, how they done stole our identity, how they said we didn't do anything. We were lazy. We invented everything. I got a book called We Invented. Black people invented everything. It go all the way back to uh, uh, 600 B.C., 65 A.D. It go all the way back how we invented everything. You got to remember we the first one here. So you're the first one here. You had to invent stuff to make it make, make it work. But when they came, when, when, the, when the Romans came to uh, Egypt, they came when they took over. They wiped all our walls. They wiped everything off the wall. They, back, they, they, they whitewashed everything. The reason why you don't never find nothing about Hebrew is like Jesus. But they burnt all our books. Read the book of uh, Maccabees. They went to our library and burnt all our records and documents. So you can't really find that. So you got to go to the Bible. Everything we do and did is in the Bible. I try to tell people that, but nobody want to listen. Your future is in this Bible. Your life is in this Bible. But let me go on to tell you what Ezekiel did. This is what Ezekiel, this, this is, I'm going to tell you, this is why I do what I do. This is why I do it. It was a commandment that you do, that I do what I do. Once you learn this word, it is a commandment. I'm going to tell you, go, go to, uh, the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel chap, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. This how, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm break this chapter down. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man. This is God talking to, this is God, not Jesus, Yahweh shot. But this is Yahweh talking to uh, 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 Ezekiel. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat this. Eat, eat that, that, eat that, that finest. Eat this roll. A roll is like, remember the roll, the stroke, the roll came on, you know, they had two rolls, and you used to roll them up. 
That's how that's how the Bible came in. It came in a book form, but back then it was in the rolls. You ain't seen the way they got the roll and they pull it over and they read it. That's the way they're saying. And go speak unto the house of Israel. I told y'all you the 12 tribes of Israel. He, God telling Ezekiel to go speak to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what I'm doing. I'm speaking to you. You part of the 12 tribes of Israel. So I opened my mouth. And he caused me to eat the roll. He caused me to eat the Bible. He caused me to eat this information. God woke me up and said, Bo, go talk to your people. Go talk to the, the Israelites. Because y'all know how I was. You know how I used to be. All I do is look, I love this word. So take out Ezekiel and put Bo in there. He said, Bo. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat this roll. That roll, I'm trying to tell you that you, you didn't see it where they pull it out and they read it and then it goes back in. That's the roll. That's the Bible. Basically, that's the Bible. Just think of that as the Bible when you hear me say that. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thou better to eat and fill thy bowels with the room that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. The word of God is sweet to you. When you start learning who you are, it's amazing how you feel when you learn who you are. You got to learn who you are. Cause you, we walk around here, we docile people. We don't know who we are. We don't know who we are. We, we everybody but who we should, who we supposed to be. We're supposed to be the 12 tribes of Israel, the children of Israel from the tribe of Judah. So called Nicholas come from the tribe of Judah. That's who you're supposed to be. But guess what? We don't want to listen. We don't want to learn. We want to come around, continue calling ourselves a byword. Whether you believe it or not, that's in the Bible that we're going to be calling ourselves a byword. They call us niggas. Just think about yourself. Our, grand, our grandmama outlived their nationality because they call you an African American. Some of us are older. I'm 55. They started calling you an African American in 1985. I was 19 years old, so I outdate my nationality. Ain't that crazy? Because that's what we believe. Nobody want to teach us the right way. You in church, they don't tell you who you are. You just reading, you don't know what you're reading. Just Ezekiel, just call Ezekiel and say Bo. Just say Bo. Because God told, told Bo to eat this word up. It went in my belly, and it was sweet like honey. So that's why I'm so happy to tell you. And guess what else he said? I'm going to go on. And he said unto me, son of man, go get thee. Unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Bo, go get the word that I fed you with that tastes like honey and go to my people. Go to my people and speak to them. So I got a platform, so I'm going to my people. Whether you, whether you hear it or not, I don't have nothing to do. I just got to speak it. I got to say I can't hold this good news. You know how you have good news you can't hold it? I can't hold this good news in. It's too good to hold in. I, hey, it's too good. I got to tell somebody this word. So I'm telling you this word that God gave me. He told me to eat the book, eat the roll. The roll is basically the Bible. Because back then, like I tried to tell you, it was the, the roll came out like this here. You didn't see me. They, they read it, and then it rolls back up. That's a roll. So basically, that's the Bible. God told me to eat that, eat this word up, and it's going to take like honey in my belly. And it did. And then he told me, and uh, 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 I read, uh, right now I'm in, in, in verse 4 out of chapter 3 of Ezekiel. And he said unto me, he said unto Bo, son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak unto thee, speak on, speak with my word unto them. I'm speaking the word of God to you. I'm telling you who you are. I'm telling you who your nationality is. I'm telling you two-thirds of you niggas are going to die. I'm telling you on the cross. I'm telling you that the Lord, Yahweh Shai is a black man. I'm telling you that God is a black man. I'm telling you they are not just a spirit. They have a body. Don't let the people tell you God has a body. You go to Daniel 17, it describes the ancient of day. The ancient of day is God because he's no end and no beginning. He's God. That's why he has it. That's why he called ancient of day. It describes him. What he had on, he had on clothes. So he had on clothes, he had a body. And when you go to Revelation 1 and 14, it describes Jesus. It describes the clothes he had on, how he looked. So he had a body. Quit letting these people tell you that he's just a spirit. He is, of course, he's a spirit, but he had a body also. Just like you have spirit, but you got a body. So don't let people tell you a lie. Read and study for yourself. Uh, verse 5. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and a hard language, but to the house of Israel. God said, you... See, when we came over here, we didn't know this language. We didn't understand this language. But God said, go speak to us 
We not the people of that strange language that, that we don't know who we are. I know who you are. I know you're a child of God, so it's not like I'm speaking to a Japanese and Japanese language. I'm speaking to Israel. God said, I didn't send you to another nation. That's basically what he's saying. I sent you to my people. So I didn't send you to nobody else. I didn't send you to a people with a strange language. I sent you to my people, which is the house of Israel. This Bible written for you. If you read this Bible throughout the whole Bible, all it says is house of Israel. House of Israel. I think it's Matthew 5, 24. I think that's what it is, 24 5, where God said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You never see anywhere in the Bible where he said he came for another people. When you when people go to people ought to go to Rome and say, neither Gentile nor Greek, you gotta understand what he was saying. I'm gonna just like I tried to explain to some guys in the jar, this is what it means. Here I am, a Hebrew Israelite, but living in the United States of America. I done left my heritage. Now I am a heathen because guess what? I did not come back to the law, statute, and commandment. See, they had two kinds of heathen. You had the natural born heathen, and you got the people who went over there like us to become heathen because we learned their customs. See, because if you go to the book of Maccabee, you see where they were prosecuting us. They was killing us. They was killing the babies. They were killing babies old as eight days old because they said when they found out the baby was certified, it was eight days old infant they were hanging. So what they did was the people got so scared. And so, just so you, I'm, I understand them. They were scared. And, 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 and the Greeks, Alexander the Greeks, they were killing them. So what they did was they reformed to their custom. So that's when they were called heathen. That's when they said you need a Greek nor a Gentile because God said this is what he was talking about. See, but people don't take, they want to tell you that he was talking about the Greeks, uh, the Roman Greeks and the, and the Catholic Greeks. No, he was talking about you being no Greek nor Gentile because guess what? You put, you, you. You reform to their way of living. The same way you are right now, you are a heathen right now. Because guess what? Because you reform to Christianity, you reform to the United States of America. You done lost your way, so that's why that's where that comes from. They won't explain that to you in church and break it down, but that's what it is. You got to read the Bible, people. You're not a heathen. You're a true child of God. You're a heathen because you're living like them because you don't follow their customs. God told me, he said, go get my people. They do not speak a strange language. So when you, when you, when you... A uh, Hebrew Israelite, you done in nothing but this Bible. When you learn the other custom, now we here, we celebrating Juneteenth. We celebrate Fourth of July. We celebrate Christmas. We celebrating Easter. We celebrating uh, uh, Thanksgiving. We celebrate every day. I listen when I listen to the radio. Every day they got a, a special holiday. Thir it's, it's every every day of the month they got a special day. We don't do that. We don't rush at the Passover. The Passover is our holiday. The Passover, when Jesus, when the Lord sprinkled the blood on, they told him to sprinkle the blood on the on the doorpost, and then the angels, the deaf angels came through, and all the people he, all the people he, uh, uh, Israel was saved. All the Egyptian babies died. See, that's our holiday, the feast day, the unleavened day bread. That's my holiday. We celebrating heathen all day. That's why you are considered a heathen in God's eye until you come back to the Lord's commandment. Okay, guess what? Verse six, not too many. Not too many people of strange speech, in of in hard language, whose word thou cannot understand, should I have sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. God saying, in this verse, he said that if I would have sent you to the people of a strange language with the other nation, they would have heard the word. Okay, check this out. You know what I'm, know how I know you know how you know what I'm talking about? Because check this out. A black man can tell you something and you won't believe it. But a white person can, can come tell you something and you will believe it. So that is what God is saying. God said, hey, he said, if I would go tell the other nation my word, they would listen to me. But if I go to my own people, they would not listen to me. And you know that's true because we are still naked, hard-headed people. All we want to do is party. We don't care nothing else but party, 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 eat crab, get cholesterol. You you can't you, you can't get nothing down. Your foot swole. You got high blood pressure. They cutting off your fingers. They cutting off your toe. Because guess what? You in church acting like a heathen. You eating all the food that God told you not to do, and you run the why you can't get your weight down. You run the why you can't get your cholesterol down. You run the why you can't get your blood pressure down because you are a heathen and you eating like a heathen when you are a Hebrew Israelite. God said, surely both, if you would have went to other people, other nations, I don't want you to German, the Caucasian, I want you to end all the race, guess what? They would have heard the word of God, but you being stiff-necked, you don't hear it. Verse 7, 
But the house of Israel will not hearken unto them. You heard God said because the heart, the house of Israel won't listen. Y'all know we still need people. Come on, man. This is nothing new. You know we don't listen to nothing a black person say. It got to come out of white people's mouth for you to believe it. But God said that the house, of, in verse 7, but the house of Israel will not hearken. You will not listen. For they will not hearken unto me. God said both. Both. <laughs> Check this out. Both. They not going to listen to you because they ain't listening to me. God told me that. So I know you not. I know everybody not going to hear me. That's what he said. Everybody not going to hear me. My own family going to disown me. They going to take something wrong with you. Because when you come into this truth, it's different from Christianity. Because guess what? They have not been opened up to the truth. They live in a lie and don't know it. Your family member, your friends, everybody that's in them churches, they live in a lie but don't know it. They think you crazy. But guess what, Ezekiel? This is the book of Ezekiel. It's telling you what's going to happen. He said, they ain't going to hear you. They ain't going to listen to you. God, our God said, they didn't listen to me. They damn sure ain't going to listen to you, boy. But you still got to go do it. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. You hard-headed. You hard-headed. Hard-hearted me. you hard-headed. Because your heart don't do a pump blood. He's about your brain. Your mind, your mind is hard, hard. you hard-headed. You're a hard-headed, stiff-naked person, and you know it. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You can see the truth right before your face, and you will never believe it. Because you, God said that's what you are. The most I call you that, not both. I'm not judging you. I'm just reading you the Bible. Behold, I have made their faith strong against their faith, and their forehead strong against their forehead. What you say, what you mean by that? Because you know we are stiff-naked people, right? God said, we hard head. So he said, guess what I do, Bo? I will make your head harder than them. So when they come at you, I'm going to give you this word that I told you to eat. And when they come at you, you just flush this word back in. I can stand toe to toe with you. Just like right in your head. Toe to toe. You come out with something. I got scripture. Because guess what? You ain't going to come out with scripture. You're going to come out with what you said, what somebody told you, and what you think. The first thing you say, I think. I feel. I know, but you ain't saying it. Just says the Lord. Because that's what the Lord said. The Lord said, guess what? I'm going to make them head hard, but I'm going to make your head harder. So you're going to stand right there with them. Because you know how we get. Because we can we get in a knockout drag out with a Negro. You got to. We can, you can't be a weak man and talk to a Negro. You know that. Hey, a man stand with a woman. He can't even talk to the woman. Now, it's going to be a big mess. You see what I'm saying? God said, I made your head harder just as hard as they hid it. And as atom and 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 it adds an atom and harder than flint. Flint is what a hard rock. You know what a flint is like. You know when you go on the railroad track, you see them flint rocks. How hard them rocks are. You fall in the rock, you a bust. You cut you up. That's what God's saying. As an atom, it harder than flint. Have I made their forehead? Fill them not. Neither be dismayed at their look. Though thou be a rebellion. God said, don't fear. I'm not scared of you. God said, don't be scared of you. Because we know how y'all get. Come on, man. We know how we get when you have a debate. You can be having a debate. A friend of the debate turns to an argument. <laughs> God said, don't worry about that. That's where they are. That's how God, that's how he said, that's what they, they, my people, I know that they're hard here. I made them. I know what they are. He telling me what I'm facing. Moreover. More he said in chapter verse 10. More he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in their mind, that we say heart, but it mean mind, and hear with their ear. God said, All the words that I fed you, all the words that I feed you, he said, Fill it in your mind. Hear it in your mind. Receive it in your mind. Hear it through your ear. Listen up, people. God telling me to get prepared for you. He wants you to hear the word that I'm giving you. In verse 11. And go get thee to them of captivity unto those people. And speak unto them and tell them. Thus saith the Lord God. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. God said we in captivity. We are in the land of our captivity people. You still slaves. Where you won't be without you. June 19 didn't free you Negro. You still a slave. Right now, the day you said you don't own nothing, they let you borrow something. They can take your house from you, take your dog from you, take your car from you, take your clothes off your back. They can put you in prison. They can shoot you. You have to fight to breathe. 
George Ford. You have to fight to breathe. You Emmett Tillman, you have to fight to breathe. Sandra Bland, y'all, I mean, you, you, you can't even. <laughs> man, come on, man. You still a slave. I ain't got to get into all that shit. You know you still a slave. You were a slave when the 4th of July came out. I mean, uh, 1776, you still were picking cotton. Come on, man. You still say, you, so you celebrate, they, you celebrate their freedom, not your freedom. You still say, not because God said in Baru, you still in the land of your captivity. In verse 12, then the spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great Russian, uh, uh, Ezekiel went up in the spirit. Bo went up in the spirit. And I heard behind me a voice of a great Russian, great Russian, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord for this from his place. I'm in heaven. Uh, Ezekiel is in heaven. He's in God's work. That's how I felt like. When the word came to me, it felt like I was in heaven for days. I just, yeah, I just sit around just reflecting and thinking. So that's what Ezekiel you were saying. I heard also a noise of wings and of living creatures that touch one another in the noise of the wheels over against them in the noise of a great rest. They is in the chariot. The creature is angels. <laughs> They was in the chariot. Heard the wheel speak. The chariot. They, Cause that, how you think he got up to heaven? God, you, 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 you don't see where Elijah went up in heaven in the chariot, huh? You see when God put the chariot over, over the children of Israel when they was going through the wilderness when uh, the Egyptians were coming out there about a pillar of cloud by uh, day and a pillar of cloud by night. That was the chariot. So he was in the chariot, been taken up to a place where God is at. Come on, man. Come on, man. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away. And I went into a bitterness and in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. He was fighting. He too much for him. He said he's going up in heaven. He's fighting. He, too much. <laughs> he, he, spent, he was scared. Because you got to understand, you're you, you going to go in the presence of the Lord. So the man just got weak. He just got buckled down. But God said, guess what? God said, guess what? Guess what? The Lord was strong upon me. God, God stripping him back up. Then, it came on, then, it, then I came to them. Or the captivity. Tell about. That dwell by the river. Of Shabbat. And I sat. Where they sat. And remained there. Astonishment. Them seven that he's up in heaven. He's up there where God is. He's up there standing by listening. Watching what's going on. And it came in the past at the end of seven days. That the word of the Lord came unto me saying. Son of man. I have made them a watchman. I am your watchman. I'm here to tell you the word of God by the Bible. Thus says the Bible, thus says the Lord. This is why I do what I do because God said you are a watchman. After I done fed you my word, I done gave you my spirit. Now you are a watchman for my people. You got to go up against my hard-headed people as I see. God said he hard-headed folk. You're going to have to go up against them. I'm going to make your head harder than their head. In other words, when you come at me, I'm coming at you. We, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a weak Christian, docile Christian. I'm going to stand my ground against the word of God. I'm not running. I'm not running away. I'm standing my word. A weak, docile Christian will run and act like a baby because guess what? He can't stand on the word of God because he don't know it. I have made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words of my mouth. And give them warning for God to give you warning. I'm here to give you warning that you're going to die if you don't change the way you live and repent to the Most High. And to repent, you got to come back to the law, statute, and commandments. And when I say unto the wicked, that shall surely die, that gives him not warning nor speaking to warn the wicked from the wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die his iniquity. But his blood where I would cry and I had God saying that if I don't go tell you that you're going to die because you're iniquity, iniquity means sin because you disobey the law of the commandment, the blood is going to be upon me. Now, I'm trying to get this blood off of me. I'm not going to be charged for your stupidity. God said you got to go out there and tell you, I'm telling you this word so the blood can get off of me because right now the blood is on bow if I don't tell you. That's why I do the video. When I see you, I tell you I have to get this word because I don't want your blood on me. God said the blood is going to be on my head if I don't go out there and tell you the word of God because I am a watchman for God. Yet, this is verse 19, Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, yet if thou warn the wicked, 
He turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered by soul. God said, if I warn you, you continue doing what you're doing, I have delivered my soul. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. I'm just telling you what Dust said to Lord. So I'm delivering my soul right now by telling you I'm set free. I'm free now. I have not no iniquity of you to carry on my shoulder because I'm telling you the word of God. So every day I see you, I tell you. Every day I talk to my friends, I tell them. When I go to work in the morning, I tell them. I let them boys know who they are. I say, man, you're not a black man. You're a Hebrew Israelite. Don't never let nobody call you black ever again because you know who you are. Again, when a righteous man, you turn from his righteous and commit a When a, a, a man, when you are a righteous person, when you turn and go back to unrighteousness and commit iniquity, I lay a stumbling block. God said, guess what? It's like you backslide. God going to lay a stumbling block in front of you before him and he shall die. God going to put a stumbling block. You're going to die. If you're a righteous man, you backslide because you know the word of God. God's going to put a stumbling block on you and make you die. God's going to kill you. If you're a righteous man, and you live in righteous life, but you put a stomach and you and you and you go back and you do something outside the will of God. Gosh, I'm gonna put a stomach block in front of you. Before him he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he had done shall not be remembered. But his blood will be required at that hand. I got to tell the righteous man this word too. God said, not only. Do you got to tell a sinner? I got to tell the so-called man who put me in church a preacher. I got to tell the so-called deacon. I got to tell the no, it is nowhere in the Bible where you ever heard of a deaconess. That's something man created. There's no such thing. God gave no woman a job in the church. <laughs> and that's what I got to tell you. God says, so whether you righteous or not, I got to tell you the word of God because I'm doing a bill for man. I'm telling you too. I'm talking to the preacher. I'm talking to the deacon. I'm talking to anybody who in them churches who think they're righteous. Nevertheless, if thou warn the, the righteous man that the righteous man sin not and do not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned also that have to live with that soul. God said, I don't live with my soul. I tell you that you're living in Rome. They're teaching you wrong. You got the zeal of God. You got you get you got the warning, but you don't have the zeal. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will. And I will there talk with thee. God said, go, 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 go to the plane. Go, go off. Get away from the people. I got to talk to you by yourself. Then I rose and went forth into the plane. And behold. And behold. And so upon me, he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plane. And I will talk with thee. And then I rose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory of which I saw by the river. See, he, he, I, that, 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 that's for the most proof that he was, up there, he was in, in a place where God was. And I fell upon my feet. Then the Spirit entered to me and set, up, set upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, Go shout, go shut thyself within that house. But thou, o son of man, behold, thou shalt put... A band upon upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. Well, this is God saying, I'm going to bind your hand. I'm going to bind your feet. Where well, you're going to be in your house, you ain't going to go into the people. And I will make their tongue cleave to you. I'm going to shut your mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shall not be to them. a reproof. In other words, God said, I'm going to take you, I'm going to put you, I'm going to put you away for a while. I'm going to bind your hand. I'm going to bind your mouth because you ain't going to speak to them. You ain't going to speak to your people. Guess what? And I will make the tongue clean to the roof of their mouth that they shall, they shall be dumb and they shall not go to them to reprove that means to correct you for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open their mouth and thou shalt say unto me, Thus says the Lord God, He that hear, let him hear. He that forbear, let him forbear for they are a rebellious house. God said he's going to shut us up. It's going to be a time, people. Listen to me. It's going to be a time where the word of God ain't going to come out. 
God gonna shut the preach, shut the prophet's mouth. And then the time come, it's gonna be too late. You just heard what he told Ezekiel. It's gonna come a time when I'm gonna shut your mouth. I'm gonna bind your hands. And they ain't gonna let nothing come out your mouth. It's gonna come a time when that's gonna come. You're gonna be begging for the word. You're gonna wish you would have heard the word. You're gonna wish you would have hearkened to the word. I am a watchman. Shalom, my people. Shalom. I love you. Shalom.